I just want to kind of talk to you guys about the dangers of feminine products and then some natural alternatives and things like that. So I'm just going to kind of go over some facts and, you know, things like that. Um, and when I say tampon, just it, it means uh, tampon and pads as well, okay? But I'm just speaking specifically about tampons, but they go hand in hand. They're pretty much exactly the same thing. Uh, one is internal and one is external, but they are still against a um, very sensitive area. So don't just feel like when I say tampon, if you use pads, it's okay, because it's not. They're still really bad. But I'm just going to kind of go over um, the chemicals and things like that in tampons, and then we'll speak about the alternatives at the end, okay? So um, the average woman menstruates about five days a month and about for about 38 years, um, and she will approximately go through 11,400 tampons or pads in her lifetime. Okay, so that's a lot, 11,400. So we need to make sure what we are using is safe. Um, and because you are going to be direct in direct contact with these toxins that are in uh, whatever you're using. So um, your vagina, your vagina is one of the body's most um, porous and absorbent mucous membranes. Um, so again, if we're in contact with toxins, we need to be uh, very aware of what um, they are because it's highly absorbent. Um, the FDA, um, I know not everyone is in, um, sorry, not in the U.S., but I'm kind of speaking from the U.S. perspective. Okay, so the FDA um, considers tampons a medical device, um, and because they uh, consider them a medical ed device, they don't have to adhere to the same regulations um, as far as um, labeling and as also as far as what they put in them as far as chemicals. Okay. Oh, my son just fell down. Honey, can you get him? I might have to grab him. Sorry. My youngest is still up. He just tripped. He's still, he likes his line. Maybe if you bring it in the front room. Okay, so um, so they are a medical device according to the FDA, and so they, they're not regulated the same. Um, so they're, they're allowed to hide a lot of stuff in it, and also they're allowed to not label it uh, as strictly because, um, you know, they're a lot more strict on food, drugs, and um, cosmetics than they are with tampons where, you know, in my mind, before I learned that, I thought they would be strict with tampons because they're being put inside of you. You would feel like um, they would be protecting you um, almost and making sure that they're regulating better, but they don't um, because they consider it a medical device. Okay, so let's talk about tampons. Um, and again, this is for pads as well. So as I'm going through this list, I just want you in your mind to kind of be filtering it through very absorbent, internal or right along um, a very sensitive area, okay? When I'm, whenever I'm mentioning these toxins or anything. Oh, and by the way, if anyone has a question at any time, please feel free to comment and ask me and I'll try to answer, okay? So tampons and pads originally were 100% cotton. Um, that is not the case anymore. They now contain a lot of additives and, and chemicals and things like that. Um, and with cotton, cotton is one of the most sprayed um, crops that we have these days. So due to the spraying, you are adding the pesticides and the herbicides and all those things into the cotton. So that's already in there on top of everything else I'm going to mention. So again, think absorbent, right? So you're just taking in these toxins when you're using these products. Um, another thing they have in them is polyester which polyester is a plastic derived from crude oil. Okay, so we already have pesticides, herbicides, and plastic. Okay, these are the things that you're putting inside of you or alongside a very sensitive area. Okay, um, it's not good. Okay, um, on top of that, they have viscose rayon, um, and that is commonly um, manufactured from wood pulp, sugar, or soy, which 93% of our soy is GMO. So. Uh, on top of that, we have this modified, okay? And before, they used to put, um, I'm gonna kind of butcher these names, I apologize, um, polyacrylate rayon and carbozymetyl cellulose. Those two were actually, they used to be in tampons and pads. They're not anymore, 
um, because those were the ones that were contributing uh, very heavily to the toxic shock syndrome. So they got rid of them, but they added that viscose rayon, which I just mentioned, um, which is kind of the lesser of two evils. So it is still very bad. They don't know what the effects are going to be if, you know, they may cause toxic shock, but like on a lesser scale or whatever. But they kind of, you know, they took out the really, really bad ones, so they didn't get a bad rep, but they didn't take, they added in something that's just as terrible. Um, so that's, and then they also have these synthetic deodorants. They have um, perfumes in them and things like that. And then just now let's talk about the cotton again. The cotton gets bleached, okay, so it's white. Even though, you know, you would think that it wouldn't be a big deal since it is being put, you know, um, either internally or right, you know, in your underwear. Like, who cares if it's white? But for marketing purposes, they bleach it. Um, so this chlorine bleaching is very dangerous. Um, chlorine bleaching, uh, bleaching creates chemicals, and one of the chemicals is called dioxin. And according to the EPA, there is no safe amount of dioxin exposure, even though they are in every single tampon. Okay, so according to the EPA, it's not safe at all to be exposed by them, but they are in every single tampon and pad. Um, that's terrifying to me, if you think about it, okay. And dioxin, um, it actually cause, causes reproductive um, and developmental delays and problems. It damages your immune system, your gut, and it interferes with your hormones. Um, since the vaginal wall we just kind of spoke about is one of the um, most absorbent, it also has fatty tissue. And dioxin is attracted to the fatty tissue, fatty tissue in the vaginal wall. So kind of think of like a magnet, okay? Um, so they are attracted to one another. So when you're putting a tampon or a pad, these dioxins are attracted to the fatty cells in your vaginal wall. Um, dioxin exposure, um, one of the biggest diseases that it's linked to is endometriitis. Um, it's also linked to cancer, fertility issues, um, gut issues, which I've already went over, and then the birth defects. Um, so it's some nasty stuff, okay, and that's just from the bleaching. So I'm going to go over it one more time. It's the cotton is has pesticides and herbicides. We have the GMOs. We have the plastic. We have the bleaching that creates dioxin. Um, we have fragrances and we have the deodorant in tampons and pads. Um, and that is what you're using. Again, I said 11,400 tampons or pads is the average amount that a woman uses through her lifetime. That is a lot of toxins that you're exposing yourself to. And so it's really important that women know that um, because we have to do something. We menstruate. I mean, there's no way to stop that. So we need to make sure that we're making a, a good decision for our bodies. So I kind of just want to go over a few alternatives. So there are natural alternatives to um, tampons or pads. Some people choose the organic uh, tampon or pad route. Um, that is an option. You need to make sure that you know exactly what is in them. Um, so look for 100% cotton and still, you know, look into the um, ingredients because I'm sure they still do bleach, so you have to figure out how. Um, I personally don't use any organic alternatives as far as feminine products because I don't like the amount that we're adding to um, the, um, wow, I can't think of it. <laughs> Uh, the landfills. Whew, there we go. So I don't like adding anything to the landfill. So for environmental reasons and also cost reasons, I mean, let's be real, that's expensive, especially if you're going organic. So I like a different alternative. Something's natural and reusable. I'm very big on reusable things. So um, there are a few alternatives. There is something called a sponge, which some women use and they love. They have different kind of sponges um, and you can use that instead. They have um, cloth pads where they have lots of people who make them like on Etsy and things like that. Or you can probably find someone local or you can probably make them yourself. Um, so you can make cloth pads, which you just wash um, and reuse. They have some underwear. There's a brand that I know in particular called Thinks. Um, my friend actually have, has used them and reviewed them because um, we were curious, um, you know, what, what um, how they worked because when you think of like underwear like re reusable underwear you think you know wet and gross and I don't know so but she had an, a great review of them so that's an option um, and then there's something called a cup 
which is what I personally use and I love. Um, but again, all those alternatives are fine. Um, another thing that a lot of people don't know, don't know when you're using um, conventional tampons and pads, the chemicals reacting with the blood actually cause you to smell, which a lot of women don't like. They feel dirty. I used to feel very dirty on my period and things like that. So they cause you to smell. Um, and also, they cause you to bleed more and to bleed longer. So when you switch to a natural alternative, your period will shorten and it will be less um, heavy, which is an awesome benefit because, you know, duh, like who, I mean, everyone wants a shorter period. I don't know. So I was really excited about that benefit as well. So I'm going to talk about the cup because that's what I personally use. So it can be a little intimidating. I know when people look at the switch um, because, you know, it's different. But I just want to remind you, when someone first introduced the pad or a tampon to you, it was overwhelming as well. It was a little weird as well. I um, mean, it took some getting used to. So we just have to kind of apply that to something else, okay? So with cups, there are tons of different kind of shapes and brands and all this, and I'm not going to go into that. I just kind of want to open up the door for you guys, and you guys can kind of research from there. If you need any resources, just let me know. Um, but there's a lot of different cups and brands and all this thing. There's also two sizes. There is size one and size two. So the sizing depends on the size of your cervix. Um, most of the time, if you have, if you're pre-children, um, you should have a size one, and if you are post-children, you should be a size two. But that is not in every case. Some women who have children feel better in a one, and some women that don't have children feel better in a two. Again, it's the size of your cervix, so that's kind of just the rule of thumb, but it's not for everyone. So I use a size two because I have two little children. Um, so I'm just going to kind of show you like a short demonstration of kind of how it works and kind of explain that, um, and then if anyone has any questions, just let me know. Um, but basically, um, this is the cup. It's 100% silicone. Um, they have different colors. I just, you know, got this one. But um, there's this little grip at the bottom, you know, like a little sticky thing. Um, that's kind of how you pull it out. Um, it's not like a tampon where it, the string hangs out. I'm sorry, Ethan. Bear. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, you already listened to this one time, but the, um, this is not like a tampon where it hangs low, like with the string and things like that to get it out. You kind of have to go up and kind of pull it out, but you'll get used to that. It's not that big of a deal. Some people are afraid that it's going to get stuck and you can't get it out. I promise you it will not get stuck. It does take a little bit of a learning curve, but you'll figure it out um, with time. And I promise you it's so worth it for your body. Um, you're going to stop exposing your body to all these toxins. Because if you're trying to get yourself better and you're trying to go natural and all these things, um, if you're constantly adding in these toxins, you're really working against yourself, okay? So if we can kind of continue to take them away from ourselves and our lifestyle as much as possible, that's our goal. So this is something that women need to deal with. And so this is an alternative. So if this is too much for you, cloth pads might be your thing. Um, I personally, I love this because I like kind of the freedom of not feeling like I'm on my period. And when you have a cup, you don't feel like you're on your period at all. Okay, so the demonstration. So basically you just fold it up like that when you are inserting it. And there's lots of videos on this to kind of, you know, figure it out. And um, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but um, it there's kind of like different techniques. Like some people twist, you know, but um, you'll figure it out. Just you can, if you need any tutorials, let me know. So kind of think this is like the cervix opening. So your vagina, it kind of is tight and then it opens up at the top. Well, this is where this needs to go, kind of at the top. So we're thinking of, I'm, I don't know how to best um, demonstrate this. So let's just think like tight, tight, tight. And then this is kind of the cervix up here where it opens and it's gonna pop when it gets to the um, opening area. And that's where it sits. And then it'll create a suction and then it's just the blood's gonna kind of come into the cup. Um, and that's it. So you kind of, some people like find it better to twist so you just have to figure it out. And then it just is going to pop. And then when you want to take it out, you're just going to grab the bottom. And I personally kind of pinch right here where those little grippies, I kind of pinch that and it pops the suction and then you twist and you take it out. You're just going to rinse it, you know, clean it out and then put it back in. Um, and obviously after a period, clean it really, really well with, you know, hot water and soap and all that stuff to kind of sanitize it. Um, 
but that's really it. It's really simple. You can leave it in for like 12 hours um, and things like that. Um, you kind of have to just figure it out at the beginning. Um, when I first started using it, I started. I was using like a little bit of panty liners just until you kind of figure out how to get the suction in correct. Um, but that's really it. Does anyone have any questions? Um, I think I kind of covered it all, but um, if anyone has any specific questions, please let me know and I can answer them. I know there's only one, really one viewer, but do you have any questions before I hop off? And if you have any questions after this, those of you who are going to watch this on playback, um, just comment below. You can tag me. Cost. Um, they range, uh, the menstrual cups range between like 30 and 40 dollars normally. I know you can get them in co-ops for cheaper. I think like even 15 dollars in co-ops. I don't know how many people are in co-ops, but there are co-ops out there. I know everyone's in kind of a different area, but I know you can get like non-name brand ones for cheaper, like $10, $15, but they're normally about like $30 or $40. Like the really big uh, brands are like Lunette and Diva Cup. Um, those are the two really popular ones. Um, they range about between $30 and $40. You're welcome. I'm glad you hopped on. And if you have any questions, please let me know. You can feel free to message me. I know this is kind of more of a private, you know, conversation. Not many people kind of talk about this um, publicly. Um, but if you need any tutorials, there's lots of tutorials. And again, there's different options. It's not just a cup. That's just what I personally prefer. Um, but there are other options. So there are lots of uh, lots of women that I know love the cloth pads. Um, I actually know women that love the sponges as well, even though for me that was too intimidating. I couldn't even just, I couldn't even fathom trying that for me and my life. Um, but some women I know love the sponge. Um, and then I know obviously a few friends that like the underwear, the Thinx. That's the only brand I know of. It's T-H-I-N-X, Thinx underwear. Um, and you can look it up. It's really cool. There's like a whole science of how it like filters or something. I don't know. Not filters. That's a bad word, but... It does. It, it's really cool. <laughs> you should look at it just out of curiosity. The things underwear are very cool, and my friend loved them. She felt dry in them. Like she loved it. Um, I haven't tried them yet, but but yeah. Is that it? Do you have any other questions? Again, just feel free to like message me if you are uncomfortable asking on the forum. That's totally okay. I don't mind um, answering any questions. But that's kind of the basics. I just want you guys to be aware. Um, that this is an issue uh, for a lot of women uh, exposing themselves to these toxins and we do need to look at better options and there are better options out there and I promise it's not as scary as it seems um, it just takes a little bit of getting used to but you'll be um, happy you did okay you're good okay thanks for joining I appreciate you hopping on so there was another lady that I could talk to um, about this and um yeah i'm glad you hopped on and have a good night and i hope to have other people view this and have their eyes opened and understand about the toxins and are open to natural alternatives